Ciao! Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a deeper dive into clustering with Google Maps and Jetpack Compose. In my previous video, now on the screen, I show you how you can create a cluster based on a few markers that you have on your map, but I left everything with the default implementation except for how the marker and cluster is rendered on the map. Today we're going to recreate something more specific in order to let you customize your cluster manager, which lets you specify a cluster render and also the algorithm that the cluster manager uses in order to group together or not the clusters on your map. Just as a reminder, the cluster function is not inside the core maps library. So to, to use the cluster manager, we also need the map compose utils library. As of the recording of the video, both libraries are at version 5.0.4. You might remember from my previous video that we need a class that inherits the cluster item interface. Here I just have a cluster item implementation that accepts a location and returns it from the get position override function, while for the get title, get snippet, and get set index, I always return null since I don't need those items. Another thing that I created is a position list, which is a mutable list of latitude and longitude. And then for two times, I generate 10 random points ranging from that initial location, which is inside of London, and I add randomly on the latitude and longitude of this position, adding the new points on the map. Let's just go ahead and use this position for now to show a marker on the map, where the state is a marker state, where the position is the position inside of our list. And if we run our app, we should be able to see that we have around 20 points nearby London on our map. And here are all the points. As you can see, if you zoom out a bit, or if we, even if we zoom in, some points are close together, are really close together, and are not nice to see at all. What we need here is the clustering function. There are two clustering function. One that I show you already is this one that accept the collection cluster item click, cluster click, cluster item window click, long click, and then we can specify the cluster content and cluster item content, which are two composable functions that, de that defines how the markers are shown. If we want to use this that function, we can just go ahead and use our position, but we need to map it to our cluster item implementation, and then we need to provide the location. And with this done, if we run our map, the default implementation of the cluster is used on our instance. And as you can see, the default implementation is now used. The more we zoom in, the less the marker are grouped together. And the outer we zoom, the more cluster are drawn on the maps until we reach the point where all the cluster are rendered together. If we want to change the how these cluster and cluster items are represented, this function give us the cluster content and cluster item content, which are two composable function. So if we go with the cluster item content and the cluster cluster content, those are two composable function that we can specify. Here I imported two functions that I show you already from on my previous video of the clustering in Compose. Those are two composable functions, but the cluster icon as cluster content item just show an icon for the cluster item implementation class that we have, where this one basically draws the same icon with a different color and also the number of elements inside the cluster for that single cluster. So let's go ahead and use them. And as you can see from the map, 
as soon as we launch our application, the, the content that is shown on the map, it's different. It's now using the single red uh, element and then the blue icon with the number of elements inside of it. And this is a customization we can provide to our cluster. But these are all things that we have already seen. If we want to use the other cluster function, this is what we're looking for. The one that let us define a cluster manager. Luckily enough, we have a remember cluster manager here, which is a Google map composable function that returns a cluster manager for us and that we can use. Since it's a Google map composable, we need to call that function inside of our Google map function. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's create a cluster manager, which will be our remember cluster manager and we need to specify which type we are willing to use. Now that we have our manager we can remove those two function and provide the cluster manager as our cluster manager. Now you can see that the function here tell us that there is a problem and this is because the remember cluster manager can return null. So what we need to do is have a null safety check on our cluster manager and use it only if it's not null. So now if we do the thing here, we can use our manager inside our clustering. If we rerun our application with these changes, we will see that the cluster manager is being used, but we lost the opportunity to change the rendering of the function. Here we are, the default icon is back being used and the clustering now gets used as before with the default implementation. As you can see from this function here, we're not able to provide the rendering of our items anymore. This is because the cluster manager contains a parameter that is the cluster render. We can use the function remember cluster render that accept a manager and this is the function we're looking for. It accept a manager which we are providing but to be sure let's go ahead and define this one inside of the null check for our manager so we will be safe. The remember cluster render has this function but also another function that we can use which is the one that accept a cluster content which we've seen already and a cluster item content which both are composable function. So if you want to change how the rendering is done by using a manager as well, this is the function that you're looking for. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and we have the cluster content item which we need to use here and the cluster content that we need to use here. Now, if we do this and run our application, we can see that the rendering hasn't changed. Why? Well, because even if the renderer remember cluster renderer function accept a manager, this is not enough. We need to set the render on the manager itself. Now, to do though, we need a side effect where we use the manager dot render function and assign it to our render. This is part of the code that is shown in, in the documentation library from the Google Maps Compose. I would have never expected that we would need a side effect to handle this scenario. I would have left it outside of a side effect this way. But if we do so and try to run our application, I can show you the exception that is being thrown, even though I don't really get it. What's being thrown here is this a null pointer exception, attempt to invoke internal interface method uh, on add on a null object reference. And if we click through it, we see that the mRender on add, so this mRender is null, although we just set it to something that we just provided. I don't really understand why this is the case, but yeah, that's how you set the render on your manager if you need to.
Now, another thing you're missing is the cluster click, cluster item click, and cluster item info window click. If you want to do that, there are functions on your manager where you can set on cluster click listener, on cluster item click listener, and on cluster item window click listener. Here, the same as for the render, we need a side effect that handles that for us. And as soon as you set those, you can specify what is going to be done when you click on one of those items. If you want the library to then, after what you wanted to do in your click, handle the default behavior, you need to return false, otherwise you need to return true. This is what uh, the standard view on click behavior is working on the Android framework. If you want to do something else and then apply the default behavior, you always return false, otherwise you return true, so you basically tell the parent class that you handle all the functionality that the click should be doing. For example, let's return true on the cluster item click and false on the cluster click. So this way, when we tap on a cluster, it should show a toast and then handle the clicks with the default implementation, which is zooming in into the cluster while the cluster item click, the default implementation should be centering the item for ourselves. So let's try it. We have a cluster with six elements. If we tap on it, we can see that it's set into the center and, and the toes were shown. While if we zoom in and tap on a cluster or on a single item, even if it's not centered, the toes is shown but yeah, again, the cluster, the item is not centered on our screen as it would with the default implementation. Now we basically have everything that we wanted to customize. We have a custom render and a cluster manager and a custom cluster. But this is everything we was able to do before, right? Yeah, that's correct. The only thing that we're missing now is the algorithm of our cluster. If you don't specify any algorithm in your cluster manager, the default screen-based algorithm uh, adapter, which uses a non-hierarchical distance-based algorithm, will be used for you. But again, we can customize our algorithm two implementations that we can see in the documentation and the, in the example library are a non-hierarchical view-based algorithm and a non-hierarchical distance-based algorithm. Both of them behave the same. The only thing that changes is that with the non-hierarchical distance-based algorithm, all the cluster and cluster items are grouped or not grouped together, even if they're not inside of the view of your screen, while the non-hierarchical view-based algorithm it accept two parameters, which are the screen width and screen height, just so it will just group together and ungroup the element that will be displayed inside the area of the map that is currently displayed on the screen. Another thing that changes is that the non-hierarchical distance-based algorithm has a function that lets you specify the distance between the cluster item with the maximum distance be between the clustered items in order for them to be grouped or not grouped. But now we need to set the algorithm on our manager in order for it to be applied. This time we don't need a side effect. We can use the manager directly and change the algorithm by using the algorithm parameter. We can set it to the distance based algorithm. And now I will show you that by changing this value here, which is now 200, how the items are grouped together will change. For example, we now have with a 200, this is the current implementation and the items are grouped together quite quickly. But if we change it to, let's say 20, which is a 10th of what we used before, we can see that they're not grouped together until we zoom out really a lot. 
This means that they must the every item must really be close together to the others in order for them to be grouped, otherwise the clustering won't be used. If we increase this a lot, let's say 2000, even if we zoom in a lot, we won't be able to decrease the markers because the distance will never be enough. Now it did, it did again. You see the elements are, but now, as soon as we zoom out, it will be grouping them together because they're too close together. So you need to play around a bit with this number. I would say that something around 150, it's the optimal. If you're looking to handle a city large area, Otherwise, just give it a try with a few other values and see what works best for you and for your company if you're working for a company. And that was all I, I wanted to show you today for the clustering and how to customize the clustering for Google Maps with Jetpack Compose in a deeper way than what we saw before. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a like. Consider it sharing with someone. It means really a lot for the channel and its growth. And thanks again for watching. Till the next time. Peace.